Uh, set theory. Remember, this is revision class. Revision means that uh, you have been taught. So I just want to remind you the things you have been taught and to make some points out of uh, what we have been taught. Okay, so on this note, uh, we are going to kick off. So we have set theory. On that set theory, there are some things I want to remind us. Uh, the first thing is uh, some definitions of terms in the set theory, okay? So first of all, I want to start with, when we got of set theory, what is a set? Set is a, a collection or a definite collection of objects, okay? When you collect some objects together and you call them uh, one, you can say it is a set. Example, when you go to the market to buy your tomato, your pepper, you see them shading it together. They will say this one is 15 naira, this one is um, uh, 100 naira, and if you observe, you will see that uh, among these tomatoes or pepper you want to buy, uh, there are more than one, but they have been shaded together to be called one. That's a set. Or example, you can say set of, uh, like in the university where we are, uh, there is a lot of departments. So if I want to get a definite department, I can be asking, I want to see the students of uh, microbiology. Microbiology has a lot of, uh, it's a department in the university under the Faculty of Natural Science. So uh, it's a set. If I want to see a student under microbiology, they will go there and pick one for me. Okay, what if I say I want to see a student in microbiology, 100 level, you see that uh, I've limited this uh, kind of person I want to see to a certain set. Okay, if I say I want to see a student in microbiology, 100 level and she must be a female you see you know the set we are talking about so that's what we call set theory so some definitions we need to know on that set theory one we still are members of a set members what we refer to as members of a set we say members of a set are the elements or objects that belongs to that set now remember that set is denoted with a capital letter this is how i call set a then the members of a set are denoted with small letters and they are put inside a coiling bracket. Example, A, B, C. These are the members of this set. They can also be called the elements of this set. A, B, C are the members of the set. They can also be called the elements of the set. They can also be called the objects of the set. Note, if I want to say that A is a member of set, this A now is a member of set A. Or I can say it's an element of set A. So I can say that A is an element of set A. A is an element or A is a member of set A. When I'm trying to refer to A as a member, I don't need to put A in a coiling bracket. But whenever I put A in a coiling bracket, I'm referring to subsets. Okay, so please don't confuse that. Uh, together. So when I say A is a member, the members we are talking about here are the small letters, the A, the B, the C. Okay. Okay. So I believe that is uh, enough about set. Uh, members of a set. Another one is uh, when is equality of set? We talk of equality of set. Equality of set. When is two sets set to be equal? Two sets are set to be equal if and only if they have the same members and also they have the same cardinality. Note what I'm trying to say. Remember, we have talked about the members of a set here. And now, we are, I'm now saying something about the cardinality. Cardinality of a set, which is represented as N, is the number of elements in that set. Example, the cardinality of set A, which I can write as this. I have set A looking at me. The cardinality of set A is 1, 2, 3. is equals to 3. If I'm asked to find the cardinality of set A, it is three, one, two, three. So cardinality of a set is the number of members of that set. Now, if I'm asked when two sets are equal, two sets can only be equal if they have the same member, the same member, number, that's the same cardinalities and the same member. Look at what I'm trying to say. If I have set A to be A, B, C, and I have set B to be B, a, C. 
I can say that set A is equals to set B. Why? Because they have the same cardinality. Their cardinality is equals to 3. And they have the same member, meaning that whatever whoever you see here, you're going to see here. A is here, A is here, B is here, B is here, C is here, C is here. So set A and B are said to be what? Equal. However, what of when they have the same cardinality and they have uh, different members? Example, let me put something like this. A, I, O. If you observe, set A is A, B, C, and set B is E, I, O. They don't have this. They have the same cardinality. Cardinality is equals to three. I believe you got that. But their members are different. The members here is not the members here. So I will now say that A is not equal to B. Rather, A is equivalent to B. A is equivalent to what? B. A is not equal to B. Rather, A is equivalent to B. I believe that is well understood. We move to another point. Remember, we are doing definition of terms. Then we are going to see past questions. Move to another term. Power of set. Power of set. Power. The power of a set is the number of subsets that can be formed from that set. Let me explain. The power of a set is the number of subsets that can be formed from that set. Remember, we have set A. Now, if I want to get the power of this set, listing, it is not the listing out the subset. It is the number of subsets that can be gotten from that set. Now, see something. Power of a set, if you want to get the power of a set, you can use a formula that says 2N. This is a formula to get the power of a set. Where N is the cardinality of that set. So if I want to get the power of set A, which I can write like this, power of set A is equals to 2N, is equals to 2. What is the cardinality of this is 3, which will give me what? 8. So the power of set A is 8. The power of set A is 8. It is the number of the subsets which can be formed from a certain set. Now, if they ask us to write out this subset, we say they are going to be eight in number, and that's what I'm going to do. That means the, sub, the set now will now be, I have A. When you are writing out subset, they should be in coiling bracket. We have B. And that means you see that they are going to be up to eight. We have C. We have A comma B. We have A comma C. We have B comma C. Are you there? Always remember that empty set is also is a subset of every set. So I have empty set. Then I have every set is a subset of itself. So that is one thing. When you are listing the subset of a set, empty set is compulsorily one. Then the set itself is compulsorily one. So this empty set, and we also have the set itself, A, comma B, comma C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the subsets that can be formed from this set. Now, their number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, tells us the power of the set. I believe this is very clear. So remember that if they ask me cardinality of set A is three, power of set A is eight. You know how we got that. Okay, let's move on. The next... Uh, what we are going to be looking at here now is uh, I have complement of a set. Complement. Complement of a set. Now, this can be represented as A prime or A C. If I'm using A as a set, if I'm referring to A as a set, I can have it as A prime or A raised power C. So whichever one is complement. Now, one thing must know that they cannot talk about complement of a set without having a universal set. Now, what is a complement of a set? This You have a universal set and you have a set. The complement of that set are all the elements that belong to the universal set, but they are not found in the set itself. Example, if I have a universal set, U, to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. This is a universal set. Why is it a universal set? Because it is a set that contains more sets more than this one. 
So that means this one can be found inside this. So this is a universal cell to this. Now, if I now want to find, I have a universal set here. I have set A itself, note. Then if I want to get A complement, my A complement now is simply all the elements that are in this universal set that are not in this set itself. So what I will do now is I will cancel out all the members of this set from the universal set. Anyone remember becomes anyone remaining becomes the complement of set A. So I have A here, I cancel out A here. I have B here, I cancel out B here. I have C here, I cancel out C here. So I'm left with D, E, F, G, H, I. So I have D, E, F, G, H, I. You see that these are elements that belong to the universal set, but they are not in set A itself, which I am making reference to. So they are called the complement of that set. They are called the complement of that set. Now, the complement of a set can be written in set builder's notation in this form, should you ask. We have that A prime is X, such that X is an element of the universal set, and uh, X is not an element of A. Now, watch this. This is how we write it in shorthand, or you call it set builder's uh, form. Complement of a set A, is, is such that it's an X, such that X is an element of the universal set. You see that that X you pick is to be an element of the universal set. And X is not an element of A. Meaning that everything that will make up a, a complement must be elements that belong to the universal set and they will not belong to what A itself. You know, uh, this is written as this, meaning that it does not belong. It's not an element of A. Why X is an element of what? The universal set. I believe, uh, 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 what we call it now, complement of set is well understood. Now, if I'm to use Venn diagram to represent that, remember, it's going to be, if I have something like this, and let me call this set A. This is a universal set. Now, if I want to draw out a complement, they are elements that belong to the universal set, but they don't belong to the set A itself, remember. So I'm going to shade only the outside ones. This is a complement. This is what we call a complement. Elements that belong to the universal set, but they are not in set A itself. I don't know if you get that. So this is its uh, representation in Venn diagram. This is its representation in uh, short form, or you call it set builder. Then we have seen its definition so that when you are asked the complement of a certain set, you'll be able to say exactly what you know. So another one we are going to look into is uh, difference of sets. Difference. Difference of sets. Difference. We all know in mathematics what we mean by difference. A minus B is A difference B. A minus B is A difference B. So when we say A minus B is A difference B, what do we say? The two sets, A and B, are said to be different with respect to A. You see? Two sets, A and B, are said to be different with respect to A. It can also be referred to as relative complement. Set difference of set can also be referred to as relative complement. Note that relative complement. So in an exam, I instruct me to ask you what is the different, what is A minus B? I can ask you what is the relative complement of A minus B? So difference of set and relative complement are the same. So let's see uh, from definition what we really mean by difference of two sets. Now, when you're talking about difference of two sets, you will make reference to one of them. So if I say A minus B or A difference B or A relative complement of B, I mean elements that belong to A, but they are not found in B. A minus B with reference to A means elements that belong to A, but they are not found in B. Let's take example. If set A is 
A, B, C, D, E. And set B is A, E, I, O, U. So if I'm to find A minus B, mentioning A first, that means I'm making reference to A. So I will ask, I will say it is elements that belongs to A, but are not found in B. So elements that belongs to A, but they don't belong to B. You will look for elements that are in A, but you cannot see in B. Once you can see the element in A and also see it in B, then uh, it is not, that element is not, uh, will not qualify. Let's see. A is here. Is A here? Yes. So elements that are in A that are not found in B. A is in A and it's also found in B. It will not make it. B is in A. Is B found here? No. So B becomes the first member here. C is here. Is C found here? No. C becomes a second member here. D is here. Is D found here? No. D becomes a third member here. E is here. Is E found here? Yes. So all the elements that are in A that are not found in B are just B, C, D, N. That becomes A minus B. If you check B minus A, you will see that uh, there are also going to be elements that belong to B, but they are not found in A. Elements that belong to B, but they are not found in A. Let's check. You now come to B, not to A. Now, you start with that one that was mentioned first. Okay, A. Is there A here? Yes, it will not make it. E. Is there E here? Yes, it will not make it. I. Is there I here? No. I is in B, but not in uh, A. O is in B, but not in A. U is in B, but not in A. You can now see that... Uh, B minus A is not equal to A minus B. So that means you need to be very careful when they ask you B minus A or A minus B. They are not the same. Don't turn it the other way around. The one mentioned first is the one you are going to make reference to. Then you try to uh, solve out. So that's what we call uh, uh, difference of uh, sets. That's what we call difference of sets. Now, this first of set can be written in a short form, or you call it set builder notation form as A is X, such that X is an element of A, and uh, X is not an element of B. This is uh, when we say A difference B. A difference B. A difference B is going to be X, such that X is an element of A, elements found in A, but they are not in B. So we call this uh, A minus B. I think this is another thing I need to bring out. Elements that belong to A, but they are not in B. You can see the examples we have listed out there. Okay, we move forward again. I'm just reminding us things that we were taught in the class. We want to talk about union of sets. Union of sets. Another thing that you were taught, union of sets. This one is denoted with uh, something like this. Union. I believe you remember union. Now, let's take example of A and B. Let's say set A is uh, A, B, C, D. And set B is uh, A, E, I, O, A, E, I, O U. So A union B, what does it mean? Now, when you union two sets, it is the elements that belongs to A or B or to both. Union of two sets are elements that belongs to A or to B or to both. So that means A, B, C, D, don't repeat. E, you know this is CO, E, I, O, U. This becomes A union B. This becomes A union B. Elements that belongs to A or to B or to both. So it's like in Venn diagram when they ask you how many people eat rice. 
and beans. Okay, how many people eat rice or beans? It is number of people that eat rice only plus number of people that eat beans only plus number of people that eat rice and beans. Remember that union deals with all. Union deals with all. So elements that belongs to A or elements that belongs to B or elements that belongs to both sets. I take this example. If we are in a class and MTN comes and say we want to recruit people that will be in our language section. Now, and in that class, they say, okay, we need people that if you, if you can speak Igbo or Aosa, please see us outside. You will observe that if Mr. A can speak Igbo only, he will go. If Mr. B can speak Aosa only, he will be there. Then if Mr. C can speak Igbo and Aosa, he will also be there. So it is element that belongs to Igbo or elements, elements that belongs to Igbo only or Elements that belongs to Alsa only, or elements that belongs to Igbo and Alsa. So note that. Okay, so that's what we mean by union of set. Now, this can be written in shorthand, or you call it set builder's notation as A union B is X such that X is an element of A, or X is an element of B. Now, this is a logic sign for what? Or, this is a logic sign for or. So, elements that belongs to A or elements that belongs to B. This is what we call A union B. The next one we are going to look at is, you know, is going to be intersection. Intersection of two sets. intersection of set. This one is denoted with something like an N. So uh, you should be very careful knowing the difference between uh, cardinality of a set and the intersection of set because the person typing the question might not be a mathematician. So you might be using N. So please ensure you read your questions very well. So let's look at set A to be A, B, C, D. And let's look at set B to be A, E, I, O, U. Now, A intercept B. What is A intercept B? These are elements that belong to A and also belongs to B. That means intersection deal with the word and elements that belongs to A and also belongs to B. Just like the uh, as, uh, example I used, if MTN should come and say, please, if you can speak Igbo and Aosa, see us outside. If someone can speak only Igbo, he will not go because they say Igbo and Aosa. So it is only the person, Mr. C, that can speak both Igbo and also Aosa, he will be there. So that's what we call intercession. So it is elements that is found in A and also found in B. A is here, A is here. That means A will make this set. B is here, is B here? No. E is here, is E here? No. C is here, is C here? No. D is here, we have A, B, C, D, A, E, I, O, U. You see that only A will make this set. So this is a single set. Okay, so A intercept B gives us what? A, A, small A is the only the member of this set. Now, what of writing this in short form or in set builder's form? A intercept B, is written as x such that x is an element such that x is an element of a and x is an element of b that is it so x is an element of a and x is an element of b if you watch that we have a logic sign for and which is this this is a logic sign for what? And. So uh, you have to note this. This is a logic sign for and. Remember that we had a logic sign for or, which is which went with a uh, union. Okay. 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 In that say, there is something I want us to note. Note. Note that A union A is A. 
a union empty set is a and a union universal set let me use e now is equals to universal set a union a is a a union empty set is a a union universal set is also universal set also another one a intercept b is equals to b intercept a note that one this and this are equal a intercept b is the same thing as b intercept a then a intercept a is a a intercept empty set is an empty set have this in mind okay i believe we move away from there <clears throat> now we move to another one that was symmetry symmetric difference symmetric difference symmetric difference now let's take set a again and what b let's say that a is equals to a b c and b is equals to a e i okay now when we say a symmetric b it is written as a symmetric b not the sign for symmetric difference now what is asymmetric b these are elements that belongs to a or belongs to b but does not belong to both i repeat elements that belongs to a or they belong to b but they don't belong to both so let's see that elements that belongs to a a is here and it also belongs so it will not make it b is here it belongs to only a it does not belong to b i'll have b d c is here it belongs to a and i don't see it in b so e is here it belongs to b but okay now we want to look at some questions that have appeared in the past question uh, over the year i mean the past question you are having with you there so look at looking at uh, 2020 through 2021 2020 through 2021 i believe you have your own with you there okay uh we will see that uh, question number one it says if m question number one here say if m x is multiple of x and f y is factor of y then what is m to intercept f it okay so they say we are going to write out this set so that we can see the elements of this set if they say that mx is a uh, multiples of x that means uh, multiples of x okay and fy is so if you watch now see something okay let's start mx the subscript here is x while we have subscript here to be two therefore this is the same thing as m2. Then it's going to be multiples of 2. And this one now, we have f8. So it's going to be factors of 8. So let's find the multiples of 2. When we say multiples of 2, we, have, we mean uh, numbers that are gotten by 2. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and so on. It's an, it's, it's an infinite set. Okay. F8. And they say Y is factors of Y. That means factors of 8. Numbers that can divide 8 without remainder. First of all, 1 will divide 8 without remainder. Okay. 2 will divide 8 without remainder. 3 cannot do that. 4, we divide 8 without remainder. Yes, we have 8 over 4. Here is 2, here is 1. Okay. 5 will not do that. 6 will not do that. Because 6 times, 6 times, uh, 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 times 6 is 12. So you see it's uh, over. So 8, 6, 7 cannot do that. Then 8 itself will do that. So we have 1, 2, 4, and 8. These are the factors of 8. Numbers that can divide 8 without remainder. So at this point now, 
M2 intercept F8. Remember that the word intersection means elements that belong to this and also belong to this. Elements that can be found in both. If you observe, 2 is here, 2 is here. If you make the first member of this set, 4 is here, 4 is here. We make the next, another member. 8 is here, 8 is here. We make another member. And that is all. And if you look at uh, that, uh, we have 2, 4, 8 as option C. We have 2, 4, 8 as option C in that number one. So mark the way this question was being asked. Okay? We are seeing question uh, year 2020, 2020 to 2021. The next question we'll be seeing is question number two. Question number two. It says, find the cardinality of the set B minus A denoted as this. Okay? First of all, they, they gave us the universal set is given as a uh, a to Q, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, O, I, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, O, P, okay, E, G, H. These ones are not there. G, H. We have K. L, P, Q. That's the universal set given to us there. Then we have, they gave us set B as A, D, E, K, Q. And we have set L as A, B, D, G, K, L, P. Okay. Now, the question asks us to find cardinality of B minus L. Now, if you can remember, I said already that B minus L means B difference L. This is elements that belongs to B, but they are not found in L. So, first of all, I will get my B minus L. When I get them, then I'll find the cardinality. I believe you understand that. So, this is B. This is L. So, B minus L in the first place becomes elements that belong to B, but they are not found here. A is here and A is found there. It will not make the set. D is here. Is D here? Yes, it will not make the set. In fact, when I see something that is here and see something, I will cancel it out. It will not make. There is D here. There is D here. It will not make. There is E here. Is there E here? No. There is K here, there is K here, it will not make. There is Q here, is there Q here? So you see that E and Q are the elements that are in B, but they are not in L. So I have my E and the Q as B minus L. Then the question says I should find cardinality of B minus L. Remember that the cardinality of a set are the numbers of elements that make up the set or the numbers of the members of that set. How many are here? Two. So cardinality of this is what? Two. My final answer there is two. Remember what I have said there? And uh, that is option B uh, there. Then we go to another question. I think it's section B, question number two. Section B, question number two. In 2020, 2021, we have section B, question number two. That are the questions that came out in set theory for that year. Look at question number two. It says, if the universal set, if U is given as one, two, three, up to ten, okay, and they gave us that A is given as four, six, seven, nine, ten. They gave us that B is three, six, nine. And they gave us that, uh, they now say we should find A union B all prime. Okay. Having got this question as uh, what we have to say, they gave us universal set. They gave us set A. They gave us set B. First of all, I'm going to look for A union B. Remember I said that A union B, there are elements that belong to A only or to B only or to both. So my solution becomes A union B only first becomes Four, six, 
seven, nine, ten. Remember, you don't repeat. I have not written three before. Three, six have been written before. Nine has been written before. So this is what I have as A union B. Now, then I say A union B all complement. How will I get that? Now, remember that the complement of a set are the elements that belong to the universal set, but they are not in the set itself. Now, we have a set of A union B. Now, remember, we have a universal set. Let me complete this by universal set because I want to do something here. So I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if this be my universal set, what I will be doing, any number I see here, I will cancel it here. I see four here, I cancel them. I see six here, I cancel them. I see seven here, is there seven here? No. I see nine here, I cancel them. I see 10 here, I cancel them. I see three here, I cancel them. You will see that these elements that I've canceled, four is here, three is here, six is here, nine is here, 10 is here. So you will see that A union B complement comes, those elements that have not canceled, they are the ones that belong to the universal set, but they are not in set A union B itself. So I have one, I have two, I have seven, I have eight, and I think that's all. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three. There is no five there. Please, you have to be careful. Why I'm doing this thing because of the exam. You must make sure that the cardinalities are complete. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So A union B complement becomes a... Uh, one, two, seven, eight, and five. That uh, answers with 2020, 2020. In uh, 2020, 2021, uh, we had about uh, three questions that came out under set theory there. Let's look at 2021 through 2022. There we have question number three. Two sets A and B are disjointed. If two sets A and B, what do we call disjoint? Disjoint sets. Two sets are said to be disjoint when they don't have any element in common. Two sets are said to be disjoint when they have when they don't have any element in common. Let's take see what we have here. They say option A. A is equals to A union B is an and this is option A. Option A, A union B is an empty set. Is that what we call this record? Look at option B. We say A minus B is an empty set. Option C, they say A intercept B is an empty set. And let's see option D there. It says 1 minus 7i. Now, Looking at this, remember I said two sets are said to be disjoint if they don't have anything in common. When we say something in common, we mean intersection. Do you remember? When a, a member belongs to A and also belongs to B, so they have that member in common. When these two sets have no member in common, then these two sets are said to be disjoint. So if you observe, A union B is an empty set. It does not define this uh, 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 disjointed set. A minus B does not define disjointed set. But A intercept B, being an empty set, defines disjointed set. When M intersection means something in common. So we say when A and B has nothing in common, that means what they have in common is an empty set. Then they are said to be disjoint set. So option C becomes the answer. I believe that is very clear. We also look at question number 10. That's the next question there. Question number 10. Which of the set is a finite set? Which of this set is a finite set? Now, what do we mean by finite sets? Finite sets are sets that are complete. Example, let me use example. If you have something like this set A, and we have one, two, three. Now, this is a finite set. But if I have something like this, one, two, three, 
four. This is an infinite set. Means that, mm -hmm. the regaba, the other go now. So this is an infinite set. Why this a finite set? Now, there is something I want us to know. Note this. In mathematics, when we talk about finicity, or is a finite set, or is a finicity of a set, we refer to numeric numbers. Let me make a simple example. If I say that set A, grains of sand in Nigeria, and they, I'm asked, is this a finite set? Somebody may say, no, this is not a finite set. Why? Because the grains of sand in Nigeria cannot be counted. So based on infinite, okay, let me write this infinite, infinite. And this is finite. So someone can say, uh, since infinite set are set that cannot be completely counted, then grains of sand in the whole of Nigeria cannot be simply counted. So it belongs to infinite. Okay. What if I say set B? Numbers between zero and one. And I ask again, is this one finite or infinite? One we say numbers between zero and one. Numbers between zero and one. There's a lot of numbers between zero and one. Lot of numbers, plenty of numbers. So someone can also say, oh, and then uh, it's finite because I can count it. I don't know how one we want to say is or our own. But listening to this very important thing. When we talk about finite or infinite, we refer to numeric number. So if that is not a numeric number, just accept that it is finite. Example, grains of sand in Nigeria. We are not talking about numeric numbers, so it's finite. This is a finite set. This is a finite set. But numbers between 0 and 1, there are a lot of numbers between 0 and 1. You cannot uh, name them or write them out completely. And because they are referring to numeric numbers, so we say this is infinite. This is infinite. And this is finite. Please make note of this. This is finite. This is infinite based on numeric numbers. Okay? So let's see what the, the question, the exam question is trying to say here. Okay? The question here in question number 10 says, which of this set is a finite set? Is it A? X such that X is a natural number. B, X such that X is an alphabet. It's an alphabet. Then C, X such that X is a star. In the sky. We're going to see them one by one. Then this one says X. Such that X. Is an integer. X such that X is an integer. Remember the question says. Which of these sets. Is a finite set. Which of these sets is a finite set. Let's see. Finite or infinite? Let's see. X, such that X is a, a natural number. Is a natural number. You see, when we talk about uh, natural numbers, they are more. Hope you understand. So natural numbers are also called counting numbers. So uh, this can never be a finite set. This is an infinite set. Remember, I'm talking about numerical numbers. So this is infinite. Infinite. This is infinite. X, such that X is an alphabet. Remember that we have only 26 alphabets. I think I'm correct. From A to Z, I think there are 26. 
you can check that out, you know. But I know that there's A to Z. There is no any other alphabet after A and Z, after A to Z. So if S is an, an alphabet, then we have finite here. A finite. Now, S such that X is a star in the sky. <laughs> Someone will say, oh, there are billions of stars in the sky, infinite. No, remember I told us. It must deal with numeric numbers. So this guy is a what? Finite set. <laughs> this guy is a finite set. It shock you. Don't let it shock you. It's a finite set. X such that X is an integer. X such that X is an integer. Now, remember that integers are sets of real numbers. So uh, we start mentioning all integers. We may not be able to, and you know it is referred to numeric numbers. So x such that x is an integer. So this becomes infinite. So you can see that uh, a as well as d are what infinite sets when you comes to this. There's someone now asks, but uh, why? How will I now answer it? Maybe the examiner will take note of that. So what you're supposed to do is the answers are a and d. A and D are the infinite sets here. Why B and C are finite? So the question says, which of the following is a finite set? Which of the following is a finite set? This is a finite set. Okay, now let's take our answer. Sorry, I just read the question now. Now let's take our answer. Since this is OBJ, we are looking for finite sets. This is a finite set. This is also a finite set based on what we have said. But you know, this is more finite than this. This is more agreed to be finite than this. So in this option, I will go with option B. Option B is the finite set. However, this is also a finite set. Stars in the sky is also a finite set. Okay, these are infinite and these are infinite. I believe we understood that. Okay, that question seems to be confusing, but... Uh, I thank God for giving us the wisdom to trash it out. Okay. Then the next question looking at us there is question number seven in section B. Question number seven in section B. It says that P is equals to X such that 2 is less or equals to X, less or equals to 16, Why X is a prime number. Q, X such that 2 is less or equals to X, is less or equals to 13. X is an odd number. Okay. The question I'll say we should find N into P union Q plus n into p intercept q. Okay, this is a very wonderful question. Before you can answer this question, you have to convert this to tabular form. You have to be able to spell out the elements of the set. Okay? So, first of all, let me spell out the element of set b. Elements of set b say that it's such that uh, x is greater than or equals to 2. Hope you know. Uh, for you to be able to do that very well. See something. I want to show us something. This, pick it, pick it to two. Pick like this. Then later you pick X with this, X with this. So this is like two less or equals to X. Let the X come first. So we have X. If X come first, this thing will change. So you can only read it when the X is the first. So let's read it from here. You say X is greater or equals to two. So that's what these two things mean. X is greater or equals to 2. So if X is greater than 2 or it is equals to 2, it means that X starts from 2. Do you remember that? X starts from 2. Now, let's see this one. Let's take 2, this 2. This one is X less or equals to 16. You see that in this case now, I don't need to come because X came first. So X is less or equals to 16. So X is starting from 2. And it will end in 16. Assuming there was no this thing, it means S is less than 16. That means 16 is not part of the game. But since they put something like this, then 16 is part of the game. 
the same thing applies to here. So the elements of P will start from 2. Why is it starting from 2? Because there is this thing here. X is greater or equals to 2. If there was no this thing here, it would be X is greater than 2. So ideally, it will start from 3. But because of the presence of this sign here, so it will start from 2. So X is greater or equals to 2, but it's less, so we terminate at 16. It will terminate. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. We have seen the elements of P being listed out. Then let's look at the elements of Q. X is greater or equals to 2, but X is less or equals to 13. Now, I'm still doing something on Q. Let me bring it out. X is greater, I mean, to start from 2, then terminate at 13. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, these are the things I've been able to list out from uh, what I've given me. But then, the information is not complete. They say that P is this. However, P is a prime number. So all the numbers that we make up this P are going to be prime numbers. What are prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers that have two factors. Prime numbers are numbers that have how many factors? Two. Uh, in the secondary school or where you come from, they will say numbers that can be divided by itself. A number that can divide itself. And I don't know how you put it. But uh, a number that can be divided by two numbers, which is one and itself is prime number, according to your secondary school. But here we define it as prime numbers are numbers that have two factors. Now, if you observe two, two is a prime number, yes, because two can be two can divide two, one, two can be divided by one, one. There's no other number that can divide two, so it makes it, three is a prime number. Four is not a prime number because more than two, four has more than two factors. So four we leave, four we leave. Five is a prime number, yes. Six is not a prime number. Six we leave. Seven is a prime number, yes. Eight is not a prime number. Eight we go. Nine is not a nine is not a prime number. Do you know why? Nine can be divided by nine. Nine can be divided by three, and nine can be divided by one. Each factor has exceeded two, so it's not a prime number. Ten is not a prime number. Eleven is not a prime. Eleven is a prime number, yes. Because 11 can be divided by 1, 11 can be divided by 11, and there is no other number that can divide 11. 12 is not a prime number. 13 is a prime number, I think so, because 13 can divide 13, and 13 can be divided by 1, and that's all. Okay? 14 is not a prime number. 15 is not a prime number. Then 16 is also not a prime number. Hence, we have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 3, 13. These are the L members that will make up set P because of this condition. Now, let us look at Q and its condition. They are going to be odd numbers. You know what we call even and odd numbers? So we have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on as even numbers. We have 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on as odd numbers. So we are talking about odd number. 2 is not an odd number. 3 is odd number. 4 is not an odd number. 6 is not an odd number. 8 is not an odd number. Is 9 an odd number? 3, 5, 7, 9 is an odd number. 10 is not an odd number. Okay. 11 is an odd number. 12 is not an odd number. 13 is an odd number. Okay. So what we make of this one now is 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. So we now go to the question. The question asks us, we should find P union Q. P union Q. Hope you know that P union Q will now be, let me use here, P union Q will now be elements that belongs to P only or to Q only or through both. So I have two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. P 
union q we have two three five seven eleven thirteen okay we have mentioned three before we have mentioned five we have mentioned seven we have mentioned eleven we have mentioned 13. The only guy we have not mentioned here is 9. So this becomes P union Q. Then the next one says we should, we are going to look for P intercept Q. P intercept Q. Elements that belong to this and also 2 is here, 2 is not here. 3 become the first member there. 5, 7, 11. 13. This becomes P intercept uh, Q. Then, solving properly now, what is now cardinality of P union Q? Cardinality of P union Q, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, is 7. What of cardinality of P intercept Q? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is 5. So, this plus cardinality of this plus cardinality of this, which will give us 7 plus 5. 5, 5 is 10, which will give us 12. So the answer to that question is 12. And that depicts, uh, okay, this does write your answer. So uh, I believe what I've done here is very, very clear. You just need to follow it step after step. So that brings us to the end of 2020, 2020, 2021, 2022. So we are going to 2022-2023 now. 2022-2023 questions. 2022-2023. Okay, which is the last year. Okay. 2022-2023. We have the first question there to be question number seven. Question number seven. It says, let you universal be we have universal to be 1 2 3 pom, 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 20 okay we have c to be 2 comma 3 we have d to be 2 comma 3 comma 5 comma 7 and we have okay then i start to find c complement minus c oh that's very wonderful C complement minus C. So what is there is that I have C. I need C complement. I already have C. So in this case now, I'm going to write out my universal set completely. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so that's my U. Then, looking for my C complement. Elements that belong to universal set, but they are not in set C itself. So in set C, I have only two and three. I'll come here and cancel that two and three. So I have one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, this becomes C complement now. The question says I should do C complement minus C. So I have C complement minus C. C complement minus C. Now, in this case now, this is my C complement. Elements that belong to the C complement, but they are not in C itself. That is why it's true. Look at C complement. Now, look at C. Elements that belong here. Elements that are here, but they are not here. If you observe, there is no element here that is here. So C complement minus C. You just like going into C complement and removing all the C. But when you come to C complement, you will not see any of the C. So that means C complement minus C is C complement itself. Do you observe that? C complement minus C is C complement. That is to say, you will just write out all the, we have 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and what? 20. So C complement minus C will also give you C complement. And you see that is true. So that brings us to the end of that question number. If we look at question number 13, we will see that it deals with a Venn diagram. Okay. So it says, in a class of 100 students, so that means universal set is 100. 35 likes physics. That means cardinality of physics is 35. 45 like mathematics. Cardinality of math is uh, 45. Then 10 likes both. Cardinality of physics intercept mass is 10. Because liking both means intersection, okay? How many students like it? neither physics nor mass? Now, listen. For you to do set theory very well, you must be able to represent this. Uh, sorry, for you to do Venn diagram very well, you must be able to represent the information in a Venn diagram. That is the number one thing. So let's see this. If I have the universal set, I have two sets inside it. This is uh, physics. This is math. And my universal set is 100. If I add all the elements of physics plus all the elements of math, it should be able to give me 100. Now, that 35 do physics does not mean that only 35 does physics. So I will just come up here and write 35. 45 does mass. Does not mean that only 45 does mass. So I'll come here and write 45. Now, number of people that did physics and mass are 10. So that one is what I will come and write here. Number of people that did so, I'll represent my intersection here. But remember, the cardinality of each of them we are not inside, are not put inside the box. Now. How do I now get this? It will be this minus the intersection, 35 minus 10. Uh, 35 minus 10 should give me 25. Okay? 45 minus 10 should give me 35. Now, 25 people, it means that 25 persons offer or likes physics only. 35 persons offer or likes mathematics only, Why 10 persons like both of them. Now, what's something now? If I want to know total number of people that like physics, whether only it or with another uh, subject, but at least they like physics, it will now be 25 plus 10, which will give you 35. That is to show that this 35 was not only for physics, but people that like physics and may also like any other subject. So that's how I would say cardinality of P is 35. Not that 35 like only physics. People that like physics and also may like any other subject, if you add them all, they will give you 35. So if you want to know the actual people that like physics only, you will subtract it for people that like other subjects and you'll get that. If you check 10 plus 35, it will give you 45. It means that 35 persons like only mass. Why 45 persons like mass and they also like another subject? Now, if I do this plus this plus this, it's supposed to give me 100. Let us see. That means P union M, which we call the universal set, is equal to cardinality of P plus cardinality of P plus Cardinality of M minus cardinality of P intercept M. This plus this minus this. That is, if you are talking about one, one circle, odd addition and the uh, even subtraction. So let's see something here. P union M is 100, which will give us 
25 plus 45 plus minus 10. I have my calculator here. 25 plus 45 is 70. 100 is equals to 70 minus 10. So 100 is equals to what? 80. Uh, 70 minus 10 is 60. So we have 60 persons here. That is to say, okay, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. When you are talking of this, we are not talking of only. So we have kinetic of P, which is 35 plus 45 minus 10, which will give me here 35 plus 45 is 80 minus 10. 80 minus 10 will give me 70. Okay. It means that if you watch now, the number I'm supposed to get here is supposed to be equal to 100, but I'm having 70. Of which if you do 35 plus 10 plus 25, we also give you this 70. Let me check. 35 plus 25 plus 10 also give you 70. Or you do this plus this minus this, we also give you 70. That means there are some people that are not captured in these statements. And such people that are not captured, they belong to the universal set, but they are not in either of these sets. They don't like math. They don't like physics. But they are part of the class we have captured. Where will you put those people? So we have these people, we call them uh, physics, intercept, mathematics, or prime. That is element that belongs to the universal set, but they are not in, in, in the set of uh, physics union mass. And these people are 100 minus 70, which is what? 30. So if you add this 30 to 70, it will give you the total number of universal sets. So where will this 30 be? They will be in the universal set without being in uh, any, either in physics or mass. So if you want to see, you do 25 plus 10 plus 35, plus 30, everything will give you what? 100. So this plus this plus this plus this will give you 100. And once it is like that, then you cannot answer the question. The question we are talking here says, how many students like neither mathematics nor physics? They don't like math. They don't like physics. The answer is what? 30. 30 students neither like mathematics nor Physics. So this is where they are. They don't. They are not in mathematics. They are not. If the question says, "How many people like physics only?" is twenty-five. How many persons like mathematics only? is thirty-five. How many people like both physics and mathematics? is ten. How many students like physics? They, and they do not put only. Listen to the question. How many students like physics? Is different from how many students like physics only. The number of students that like physics here is 35. Why the number of people that like physics only here is 25? Number of students that like maths only is 35. Number of students that like maths without putting only is 45. The number of people that don't like maths nor did they like physics. They don't like any of them. It's 30. The total number of people in this set we are talking about, which is a universal set, is 25 plus 10 plus 35 plus 30. We give you what? 100. And that is how we got that uh, question. I believe these things are very, very simple and uh, clear. We look at question number... We just looked at question number 13. So the next one is question number 25 for that same year. Go to question number 35. In that place, 25, not 35, sorry. Let's see what that question is saying there, which is the last question for that year. Question number 25. Last question for that year. So it says, it's A is x such that x is an element of z plus and uh, x is a factor 
of 30. They have another set B that is X such that X is an element of Z plus and uh, X is a factor of 72. They now ask me to find A intercept B. Okay, look at this question. X, so that X is an element of Z. What is Z? Z is integer. Z is called integer. Integers, we have positive integers. We have negative integers. So these are positive integers. Both of them are positive integers. So we need to write them out in tabular form. A, that is spelling out. We say X, spelling out the members of this set. X is an element of Z, which is integer. And X should be a factor of 30. The factors of 30 that are integers are what we are going to write. What we mean fact numbers that can divide 30 without remainder. Numbers that can divide 30 without remainder. So we start from 1. 1 can divide 30. 1 is a factor of 30. Try 2. Yes, 2 is a factor of 30. 2 can divide 30 without remainder. What of 3? 3 is a factor of 30. You have your calculator, you can also follow. 4 is not a factor of 30 because 30 divided by 4 will give you 15 over 2. What, what of 5? Yes, 5 is a factor of 30. What of 6? Yes, 6. Is 6 a factor of 30? Yes, 6 is a factor. 7, no. 8, no. 8, no. 9, no. 10. No. Yes. Yes. We give you three. Ten. Eleven, no. Twelve, no. Thirteen, no. Fourteen, no. Fifteen, no. Fifteen, yes. Fifteen, yes. Because thirty divided by fifteen will give us two. Sixteen, no. Seventeen, no. Eighteen, no. Nineteen, no. Twenty, no. 21, no. 22, 23, 24, 25. So that the next person you are going to be seeing there is 30 itself. These are the factors of 30. And they are all positive integers. What of B? 72. They are also going to be positive integers. And S is going to be a factor of 72. Numbers that can divide 72 without remainder. 1 must be there. 72 divided by 2 is 36. So 2 go dead here. Divided by 3 is 24. So 3 go dead here. Divided by 4 is 18. 4 go dead. Divided by 5 you no know, go. 6 unko. Yes, 6 down. 7 unko. No, 8 unko. Yes, 8 them. 9 unko. Yes, 9 them. 10 unko. 10 no them. 11 unko. No, 12. Yes, 12 them. 13 unko. 13, no, they are 14. No, 15. No, 16. No, 17. No, 18. Yes, 18, follow. 19, Inco. Nineteen, no follow. Now, if you observe something, we're already in eighteen. So, if we, we, we let's not exceed thirty, since the question says we should find a intercept b, let us see uh, seventy-two. Can it be divided by any number in uh, twenty from twenty up? Twenty-one, twenty-two, no, twenty-three. 22, no. What of 23, no. What of 24, 
No, yes, 24 is there. 24 is there. What of 25? No. 25 is not there. 26 in ko mba 27 in ko mba. I hope you are with your calculator pressing this with me. 28 in ko mba. 29 in ko mba. 30 in ko. No. So you see this one stops here. So A intercept B. Elements that belongs to A and also belongs to B. So what elements are that? We have one. We have two. We have three. Four, no day. Five. We have six. We have uh, seven, no, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And if you observe, that at, it will stop at six. So A intercept B is one, two, three, and then six. And that is question number 25. And uh, question number 30 is another one. Question number 30 is another one. Let's see. And that will end us with uh, the questions under set theory. Question number 30 is another one. Now, if you observe question number, I say in a class of 50 students, universal set is 50. It says 21 like English. Cardinality of English is 21. It says 20 likes mass. Cardinality of mass is 20. It says 50 students like both English and mass. Cardinality of mass intercept English is 15. Then now says, how many students do not like either mathematics or English? This is the same question we have answered before. That is why we say that they can repeat questions. Now, you already know it's going to be the number of people that does not like physics. Uh, sorry, now it's English and math. Before it was physics and math. So uh, if you calculate that very well, you have your circles, you have your English, you have your math. Here, yeah, remember, you are going to write 21 here. You are going to write 20 here. But here, you are going to write 15. So you do 21 minus 15. You do 21 minus 15, which is going to give me 6 here. I do 20 minus 15, which is going to give me 5 here. It means 6 people like English only. 5 people like math only. But 15 people like both English and math. 21 people like English and they also like another another something. Uh, 20 people like math and they also like some other subject. So if the universal set is 50, I'm going to do 6 plus 15 plus 5. 6 plus 15 plus 5 is going to be 26 because 6 plus 15 plus 5 is 26. 26 is not up to 50. So to know people that are going to be here, I will say 50 minus 26 which will give me 24 so that 26 plus 24 will give me 50 that means i'm going to be having 24 persons here so that i'm going to be having 6 plus 15 plus 5 plus 24 will give me 50 so the answer we are going to be reporting here is that uh, english union mass all prime is what 24 we have done that before, and we have done so that when you see this type of one in, an, in the forthcoming exam, you will give God the glory. So that brings us to the end of a set theory. We enter another topic. Uh, thank you, and please use this to memorize your set theory.